Welcome back to Plus Politics. The President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has stated that Nigeria is a poor nation and that has uh, no option but to borrow to fund infrastructure development. Lawan, however, assured that the legislature will not be frivolous in granting executive requests for loans. He said such requests would be subjected to uh, thorough scrutiny by the parliament before approval to ensure the use of the loan is monitored via an oversight arrangement. Joining us to discuss this is uh, Gospel Obili, an economist. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Obili. Thank you for having me. Good evening. All right. So there's been, you know, arguments for many, a couple of years now, actually, back and forth. Uh, there's people who agree that Nigeria is completely broke. There's those who say, no, Nigeria is not broke. It is just uh, poorly managed. I'm going to share, you know, something from uh, Kingsley Mogalu, who tweet, uh, posted on social media a couple of hours, or I believe maybe days ago. It says, Nigeria isn't poor. It is impoverished. We don't need to borrow. Uh, we do because we are lazy to think, generate revenue locally, and too corrupt to let go of government funding uh, inflated infrastructure contracts that can be done by private capital under PPP. Um, so, once again, I'm going to ask the question, do you think or do you agree with the Senate President or with Kingsley Mogalu? Is Nigeria broke? I don't think Nigeria is um I would say a mix of both, first of all. Um, Nigeria is, has been poorly mismanaged. And at the way it stands right now, technically speaking, Nigeria is broke. But if you look at it in terms of potentials, all right, they are available for us to explore and maximize uh, for infrastructure financing and all of that, Nigeria is not broke. All right, so it's a figurative meaning when people say Nigeria is not broke. But technically, within the scheme of things, as it's where right now in economic management, that's the case. Okay, so, so let me understand better. Is it that we're not making enough from taxation, from uh, a sale of uh, oil, from you know, agriculture, whatever else? Um, is it that the country isn't making enough or we are just not using our money well? It's actually a mix of everything. So first of all, the monies you're getting from the oil receipts are not being properly uh, um, used all right for the right developmental causes so it's either you are servicing a debt or you are um, funding government waste or from one form of recurrence or the other all right so you have that there secondly nigeria is not making enough not making enough not because it doesn't have the potential to make enough but not making enough because it hasn't properly diversified all right the non-oil revenue base all right and enabled um, critical economic agents in that space like smes or right, access markets beyond um, the nation. So yes, you have that document, you have, have the argument of not making enough in that regard. And also you have the argument of um, uh, poly mismanaging what it has um, currently in terms of oil receipts. Okay, well, we're gonna get into the perspective of making enough and how we can maybe even make more, or maximize all the potentials we have as a nation to make a whole lot more money. But let's, you know, look into something that, uh, of course, the Senate President also mentioned, and that is borrowing to fund infrastructure. Um, we currently are in about 33 trillion naira debt. Uh, we, of course, have borrowed and are still borrowing to fund infrastructure. Um, do you think that there are ways that we can look internally and um, fund our infrastructure by ourselves without continuing to borrow? Uh, the uh, debt servicing figures currently are, are, are really, really shocking. Okay, so let me first state that um, technically there's no nation in the world that has reached the level of development that did not borrow. Um, budget deficits are normal to a very large extent. Um, it's, uh, you'll hardly find a situation where economies have budget surplus or a balanced budget. So it's largely budget deficit. Then the question now becomes that how do you finance those deficits? So you can either finance those deficits. One of the ways to finance those deficits are through debts. All right, so the, the big question is not really on the debt, it's actually on um, how those monies are channeled and what are the priorities for the public leadership or the government of the day. So technically, we've not used those funds very well um, over the years, all right? We once had a debt relief from the Paris Club in 2003-04, but right now we find ourselves in a probably worse situation that we were, all right, then. That's one. On the second, and we need to understand that infrastructure financing or infrastructure projects in its sense are very, very cubersome projects, all right? And right now, in terms of revenue mobilization and developmental financing, Nigeria cannot afford, 
all right, to finance its infrastructure by itself at the moment, at the moment. Now, are there potentials to be able to unlock that? Yes. But um, if you look at it from a place of time lag, all right, and the urgency of infrastructure, all right, being the fact also we've had a long history of fiscal and discipline, meaning that all the monies we made, all the monies we borrowed over the years, and even at the moment are still largely being wasted and they're being properly appropriated or used. If you look at all that, the fiscal indiscipline and the poor uh, revenue mobilization, then you, you know that there's a potential for us to finance our development ourselves, all right? But because you have those two uh, problems on board and infrastructure is a bit of an immediate item on the table, then the country has to look for critical ways to finance infrastructure. All right, so uh, the focus largely is what is are these monies being used for and um, the level of uh, um, how are they being channeled in terms of mainstream financing on projects and then um, speeding up on projects and all of that to ensure that infrastructure is being delivered to the Nigerian people. Oh, well, it's also um, um, the responsibility of the government in power to figure these things out. Uh, for you know, too long now, we've instead had uh, persons in positions of power who have been appointed um, giving speeches instead of actually going to work, giving reasons, blaming you know, one factor or the other instead of actually going to work. And it's going to be sad for Nigerians that after eight years, uh, you know, a set of people leave government to leave office and all they've done in those eight years are talk about the reasons why things aren't working instead of actually being there and making sure that things work. So there is that. Another responsibility I believe uh, the government should have is as it currently stands, we have a problem with leakages of government funds. We have not been able to successfully create systems that block leakages. Uh, ministries, departments and agencies, um, contracts, uh, the National Assembly, there's so much and so many ways through which Nigeria loses money every day um, without being able to account for any of these billions and billions of Naira. So let's talk about where the current administration may still be failing to block leakages uh, with regards to uh, government uh, funds. Just be in this context, um, failure to block um, 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 funds and all of that to ensure that they're use, being used correctly. But leakages can also mean that uh, the inaction uh, that comes from government when SMEs do business across the um, shores and they make a lot of money without no checks and balance in that case. So a leakage is also very, very related. It borders everything really on your actions and your inactions. So yes, I agree that um, being the structural deficits we have in the Nigerian economy, leakages are a major issue that we have. One way to uh, block these leakages would have been the use of technology in the sense, all right? And also maximizing the Nigerian business ecosystem. But the truth is that you cannot do so much in the ecosystem until you've provided an enabling environment, all right? Part of providing an enabling environment is that you are, the environment is so efficient that there are no room for leakages, all right? Because when you don't have an enabling environment, it automatically means that by your actions or inactions, there are rooms for leakages, all right? So, and other economic agents are equally as smart, or if not smarter. So they probably have identified these leakages and tried to gain the system on those grounds. So yes, you can't make you can't you can't um, uh, 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 blame them for that. But I, I think to a large extent, the government has to build an efficient system around blocking leakages, particularly through the use of technology. All right, and whilst um, doing all of these things, ensuring that there is an enabling environment for people to thrive. So until the system is working, you cannot correctly block leakages. Oh, well, to a large extent, yeah. Well, you know, you, you said you can't blame them. Um, I'm guessing a lot of people would disagree because, you know, it's still part of their no, responsibility. I say, you can't blame, I say you can't blame the SMEs for trying to... Oh, SMEs. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not the government. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, I'm, I'm referring to government and being able to set up systems. And you said, you oh, know, okay. technology. Um, they should be able to set up systems to ensure that every single penny that is meant for the government gets into government accounts and we're able to increase the amount of earnings by uh, the Nigerian government. We should be able to do better with auditing. Uh, we give out billion Naira contracts every other you know, week and we still are not able to audit uh, properly um, where all these funds go into. Every year we hear of a, you know, a budget you know, and trillions of Naira you know, are spent every year in the country. We still don't do proper auditing to you know, where all these funds go. Customs, immigration, there's so much that money can come from. Um, let me introduce Naimeka Obiariri, um, who's an investment banking executive. Thanks, you, uh, thanks for joining us. 
Uh, if you can hear us, uh, Mr. Enemeka, can you, can you quickly say hello? Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me. All right, welcome. Thanks for joining us. So I want you to uh, start up your conversation with regards blocking leakages in government. Um, Nigeria should be making a whole lot more, should be having a lot more finances, you know, to do, to fix infrastructure, but we don't seem to be finding this money anywhere. That's one question. And then the second one would be on how you think Nigeria can make more money. Um, in what directions do you think our investment should be now? Should it be in agriculture, in information technology, in tourism, anywhere? Okay, uh, first of all, um, when we talk about leakages in the system, it's deliberate. It's a deliberate um, or big system that will have been created by the 1999 Constitution, um, which um, a class of people that I classify as elitist gangsters, um, the political people I classify as political bandits across the nation, you know, deliberate um, created um, leakages that they know can easily be blocked. I'll give you a clear example. Nigeria is one country that is so blessed, one country that can actually live beyond the tag as the extreme poverty capital of the world, if we are very sincere and honest. I, you know, we talked about borrowing. Nigeria has no business borrowing if we have put our acts together. If you look at the records and the MPS reports, even the reports of the GMO, yes. based on the um, 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 second quarter report, first quarter report, 2021, Nigeria is spending about one trillion naira to service existing debts. One trillion naira used to pay interest component of over 22 trillion naira that has been accumulated over the last six years. One trillion naira that is used to service the interest component of over 22 billion dollars that have been borrowed over the last six years that cannot be explained. And I will explain to you this. If you look at the 2021 budget, you will see clearly that that budget is predicated upon a deficit of about 5.2 trillion. 5.2 trillion that will be borrowed, either by way of by way and means from the Central Bank of Nigeria or through external borrowing. I've never seen a country, if Nigeria is a corporation, Far long it will have been liquidated, and I will explain why. If you look at the 2021 budget, the recurrent expenditure, both the wages and non-wages expenditure, is more than the revenue that we expected to incur, both from the oil and the non-oil sector. I've never seen a country anywhere in the whole world where the budget is planned and predicated on borrowing to pay for consumption. It is never done anywhere in any way in the whole world. And everything which this country is built, the 1999 constitution, a constitution that provided for a shining arrangement where people gather in Abuja to sell crude oil, share the revenues, nobody within the 20 years of government is thinking about how they can create wealth. If you look at the 1960 constitution, 1960 constitution, those constitutions were built upon a fiscal framework that allows for productivity, for resource control, where every constituent unit will go back to their base Build up revenue based on activities unique to those constituencies. Contribute 50% to the center and give 50% to themselves. These constituent units, both at the local government and the state level, do not bother one bit of how they can raise and create wealth and bring bread to the table. Everybody is waiting for the crude oil for Nile Delta. 
to be shared and distributed among the tech. Nigeria is resource poor. And that is why we are borrowing. If we will go back to the 1966 constitutional framework that allowed for resource control, that allowed for regional autonomy, that allowed for the constituent units to really look inward and grow their economies based on what is competitive advantage they have within those units. And then contribute to the center and give them themselves. Yeah. Most states in Nigeria, most government elected political office holders, we sit down and drill down on the assets and resources within their localities, build on those things and contribute to the center. So what we are having today, what we are borrowing, is because we have refused at all levels to tap into the resources available to us, both natural and human capital, to build wealth that will be shared among the component units and nationalities within Nigeria. If you look at Nigeria from 1960 to 1966, look at our contemporaries, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, you will discover that we have been left behind we had a constitutional framework from 1966 that allowed each of the constituent units to drill down their assets, create value, keep 50% to themselves and contribute to the center. Today, we have a Babiala economy, a physical framework that intros laziness, that intros right. indolency that intros corruption, that intros the worst of us, ruling over the best of us, and that is where we are today. All right, Mr. Nemeka. If you look at... Um, I'm not sure if you can see here us. Uh, Mr. Nemeka, uh, well, I, I think your response basically answered the two questions uh, that I had asked you, and uh, it's time for us to now wrap up the conversation on plus politics this evening uh, talking about nigeria's finances and you know the need for restructuring and how we can do better if we make the you know the right decisions it's a conversation that can last for days or weeks um but i thank you both uh gospel obili and economist and nameka oh hi uh for both joining us and for sharing your views with us this evening looking forward to having another conversation with you thank you for having us all right Thank you for staying with us so far. It's been pretty interesting. We'll take a short break, and when I return, uh, I'll be giving my take. Still is plus politics, and now my take. Part of the job of the media is giving everyone a voice, the ability to hear different views on issues. We strive to make this happen for fairness, but also for traction and for views on our individual platforms. Media organizations want to interview pastors, government officials, boss drivers, criminal suspects, ex-convicts, basically everyone who brings a perspective to issues or brings controversy and viewership to our platforms is part of what we do as a media. But there's a problem when we allow the need for clicks on our platforms to drive our decisions on who gets that platform. Sometimes we may be doing more harm than good. Sometimes. Constantly giving your platform to characters uh, to have their say allows for the spread of toxic, dangerous views, almost even legitimizing views that could create more damage to the journey forward. It gives more boldness to characters who normally should hide their heads in shame. It destroys the moral compass with which we should live as a people. We should all fight to kill or change certain narratives and not give them platforms to grow. We should protect our society from a destructive elements and not instead give them a megaphone of boldness. And that's my take. Thank you for joining us. I am Osao Gie Ogmawang.